Hello everyone. So I've been really obsessed with wildflowers and weeds and really finding the beauty in all of these wildflowers and weeds and the hues and the colors and the medicinal usages and all of that. So these are golden rods. There's some chamomile flowers there. Uh, and then we're going to paint the one that has the most vibrancy and color, which is the one right here in the middle. I'll put the name of it on the screen, but the easy way to say it is Colorado rubber weed. So apparently once upon a time they were used um, to make rubber and you've probably seen it like growing in your backyard or just popping up in dirt alongside fields because they are wildflowers and they are so pretty. They look like chamomile flowers, but they are not. All right. So I'm going to be painting these. So they're, they're very, very small, right? But I'm going to paint them um, as if they were huge, like a sunflower. And apparently they are a part of the sunflower family. They have the same, like the way the petals spring out from the buds, it looks the same. So you saw that I just put a few stipples of color. I'm sorry, a few drops of water. And I let the water connect in certain areas where I put it down. I hope that makes sense. And all I did was I took the dropper and I just dropped my ink into the water and it made this, which is really cool. It looks like little bitty puzzle pieces. Um, so when, once you drop your ink into water, it's gonna spread out wherever it wants to go and some parts are gonna be lighter, some parts are gonna be darker and that just depends on how much water is in each part. And that's really, not for you to be concerned with, not for you to be worried about, just let it do its thing. Okay, so at the bottom of the flower, I'm adding in some green color and I'll give you a close up in a minute. So you can see that there's some hues of like a light green going into the yellow, yellow like mustard color. And I'm just allowing this green and yellow to mix in so that these are these are the only two colors that i'm using just yellow and green you'll see that the more we're painting these wildflowers the the less materials we're using all right so i'm just taking the tip of my brush and i'm doing a line drawing on the dry parts of the paper so I'm not using any water and i'm going to make this flower that we just painted the focal point and then I'm going to pull some of the flowers towards the end each ends of the paper going in a diagonal so I've done the I've done the middle flower or the base of the middle flower. And then we did the bottom flower as if it's hanging, going upside down. And then we're gonna do the top flower and it looked like it's leaning over to the right. So it's giving it a lot of character instead of just drawing the flowers like straight in the line or going um, straight up and down the paper, we're giving it some movement. And that's how wildflowers look. Like when the wind blows, it has this movement, it curves, it's just beautiful. Like I'm, I'm becoming literally obsessed with these, but look at how much movement it looks like it's, it's having. Uh, it's looking like the wind just blew the paint onto the paper. All right, so you could leave it at this stage. I feel like it just needs some more dimension. So I'm, I'm adding in some black Sumi ink and I'll leave, I'm gonna leave all of the materials in the description box so you can find them, but especially this Sumi ink, this brand, which I really, really like. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the black ink and I'm adding it to the base of the flower, but you can absolutely add it to the top and it'll blend just as beautiful. The key is to just adding in a drop. And if you take any of my classes, you'll see that I 
go in detail about how much ink to add but you don't want to add a lot at all just a droplet because that black ink will completely take over and then you'll just you'll hate your painting which you don't want to do so I had a teacher once to tell me that painting with watercolors is like ice skating. So you're really holding your brush lightly and just letting the color sweep across the paper. Like you're really not controlling it. When you think about ice skating, ice skating is not like break dancing where you're tight. It's a really loose, loose art, a loose movement. So just think about that when you're painting watercolors, try not to be too stiff. Okay, so the last thing I'm doing is I'm adding in some white paint. Now, my preference is to add in like some white gouache paint, um, some white acrylic paint. I was running low on paint and all I had was um, a Dollar Tree by me and I found some tempera paint and it's not really showing up. So you really wanna get some white paint that's gonna really show that vibrancy. Speaking of materials, these are water brushes from Arteza. I'll leave links where you can find these, but these are the best brushes to use on the go. You can see how you can just press it and the water can come out and it can, it really controls your painting, especially if you're just starting out. So this is the finished painting of our Colorado rubber weed. Very loose, very fluid, very beautiful, effortless, vibrant in color. If you all have any questions, let me know in the description box and let me know what wildflowers you have growing in your area and maybe I can paint them on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you next week.